Shut score! Eric Israel, write his name in a rose tattoo. Shot to score! Michael Loria! that aren't in postseason play right now. I am. Mackenzie and Melanie Gandy, they're here to join us to talk about their season. And they're juniors, they're twins, but it's good the first season that they've actually played with each other on the field due to injuries. And so we get to hear about the early season success that they've had with the team and each other on the field. Yes, and of course, Jack O'Brien and John Hanna, two Century Robert Morris men's hockey beat writers, are going to be in studio today to talk about the team's trip to Buffalo. But before we get to any of that, <clears throat> let's talk about the women's basketball. They just played the conference championship game, and the regular season went quite, went quite well. They ended up with the first overall seed after a 16-2 record in the regular season. Neka Zebo took home first team and all defensive player uh, in the NEC. Isabella Passet ended up the defensive player, or no, uh, the rookie of the year, excuse me. And Coach Pascalia, he got his third straight coach of the year. In but three it, years too, by the way. It, incredible. Three years, three coach of the years. But all of these regular season accomplishments, they all came down to one game, the conference game. The last game that the woman would play in the North Athletic Complex. So let's go there, let's go to the highlights, and let's see if they could get it done and go dancing. And if you watched the week that was, I think you've <laughs> got a little foreshadowing of what's going to happen in this game. So, as the Colonials start off, we're going to get to see them here get off to one of their best starts of this season at home, and they're knocking down these threes. They were 9 for 26 from three, almost the highest number of threes that they attempted in one game this season. Isabella Passet, who you saw there with that three, she ended up with 12 points, and don't forget, she was the NEC Rookie of the Year. Great player. And what's interesting in this game uh, is that Ikematsu, who had an incredible season from the three-point line, didn't even score a three. But we're going to see as we get into the second half, and St. Francis starts to draw back. Ikematsu is going to make one of these plays that puts the game away. So as you see the Colonials, they had 24 points in the paint. They had 25 points off turnovers to just St. Francis's eight. And it was an incredible performance. And this was the play I was talking about. Ikematsu, she passes up the three. She drives in, hits the floater. Colonials win 65-54. And of course, that sets the Robert Morris women's basketball team to, to send them, uh, my apologies, to their sixth NCAA tournament in history tomorrow when they take on the Louisville Cardinals. Let's take a look at both teams' tournament history for the NCAA. For Robert Morris, they head to their sixth NCAA tournament appearance, like I just said, um, while Louisville is heading to their 22nd appearance. This is Robert Morris's first appearance since 2017, while the Cardinals have now made it nine times in a row. Louisville has made three Final Four appearances and has lost in the championship twice in 2009 and 2013. They have a total of six conference titles spread out between Conference USA and the ACC. Louisville has one conference tournament championship since joining the ACC and has two regular season championships in the conference. Last year's conference tournament victory was their first since 1993. As for Robert Morris, they have won eight conference titles. This is also their third regular season conference title as of many seasons. But the two teams found out about their appearance, about their, um, them playing each other a little bit earlier than expected, as the selection show for the women's NCAA tournament was supposed to be this past Monday at 7 p.m. on ESPN. But the teams were able to find out about their seeding about four hours prior to that, as ESPN accidentally released the bracket as a graphic on their show Bracketology on ESPNU. The worldwide leader in sports released this statement in response to the mix-up. Quote, in working with the NCAA to prepare for tonight's women's selection special, we received the bracket. Similar to years past in the midst of our preparation, the bracket was mistakenly posted on ESPNU. 
We deeply regret the error and extend our apology to the NCAA and the women's basketball community. We will conduct a thorough review of our process to ensure it doesn't happen in the future. We will now broadcast the full bracket at full bracket at 5 p.m. on ESPN2 and the regular scheduled show on ESPN at 7 p.m. End quote. But um, looking to preview a little bit the matchup uh, between the two matchups before. There's a couple of great coaches going up against each other in Louisville. There are. You know, we, we talked about Coach <coughs> Biscalia winning his third coach in just three seasons uh, for Robert Morris and the Colonials, which was an incredible accomplishment for him. But on the other side, <coughs> for Louisville, we have head coach uh, Walls, <laughs> but he's actually going to be suspended for the game. He had some uh, negative comments about officiating. And he is going to have to, as he said, find a nice place to have brunch to watch the game. Why don't we look at the tail of the tape between the two head coaches for both the Robert Morris women's basketball team and the Louisville women's basketball team. Actually, we're going to look at the two teams itself for the tail of the tape for that. Um, the tail of the tape between the two teams, the points per game, Robert Morris women's basketball, 62.9. But they're, um, defensively, they've been a lot better in terms of that. Opponents point per game you see there, 54.8. That is about six points lower than Louisville. So very, very well defensive for Robert Morris. Yeah, Louisville's a great scoring team. I mean, it's going to be the best team that Robert Morris has played. Some of the best players, especially from the perimeter. Louisville's going to get their shots up, and they're going to score a lot. And Robert Morris being the defensive-minded team that they are, we're going to see if they can score enough points to upset the number one overall seed in Louisville. Yes, yeah, so and now let's see the coach breakdown for the two coaches that we hinted at earlier in the show. Uh, let's see if we can see the coach breakdown between the two coaches. There's the coach comparison that we kept hinting at. Coach Charlie Biscaglia and Coach Jeff Waltz. Um, the career record, of course, Jeff Waltz, like you mentioned, will not be coaching tomorrow. It is still his staff, though. He is 3-22-97. It's his ninth straight NCAA tournament appearance, like I already said. And again, very big. He will be suspended for tomorrow. Yeah, and that, that is huge. And, and Coach Biscaglia, if he can take advantage of Louisville being without their head coach. And it will still be the same coaching staff, but if as good as he's been in his career, it's his second time in the NCAA tournament. I'm excited to see what he can he can scheme up to to take advantage of Louisville being without such an important part of their team. Such a great coach is, uh, is Coach Wallace for Louisville. And of course, there's such a great coach here, Robert Morris, as Sam Anthony had the chance to talk to Coach B, as he is known for the Romans basketball team, earlier this week about their preparation with Louisville. Let's send it over to Sam Anthony, who got to have the chance to sit down with Coach B. Work really hard in practice to, uh, to, to, to get things in perfect order for the pace that we want to play at and, and just, you know, prepare like we would for, for any game. I mean, that's how we treat every game, no matter if it's the first game of the year or the conference championship. We will prepare the same way. You focus on the game. You know, um, you know the, the, the shows, the talk, uh, the social media, uh, all that stuff. You know, you're going to have people that are going to be calling your phone and texting you you haven't heard from in five years. You know, wanting to, you know, just, you know, get the scoop and talk to you and stuff. And you really got to keep your circle tight. You, you know, as, as even being, res you know, with all respect to all those people that want to celebrate with you and stuff, you got to keep your circle tight and you got to focus on the game. And what, as we were talking, you know, Coach Piscalia, he's going to definitely have the advantage with Walls being out. So Walls was suspended due to uh, being critical of the officials uh, following one of the games that Louisville had. So he will not be on the sideline, giving the Robert Morris the upper leg uh, as they try to upset the number one overall seed and create some history. Yes, and it's, of course, it is, we talked about it throughout, it is a big loss for Louisville. Uh, again, it, it, it's a big, it's again a big loss. You know, this, it's interesting how they did the suspension. Uh, the suspension happened. Uh, the play, the incident in question happened last year in the tournament. Right. If we can, uh, and so as we go ahead and pull up the NCAA statement to, to about Coach Walls. And again, it happened last year with with the incident. And here's the statement right there. David, you want to go ahead and take this one away? Yeah. The committee actively encourages coaches and student athletes to display good sportsmanship throughout the season and during the championship. The committee agreed that Coach Wall's conduct did not meet acceptable standards and has no place in the sport or the Women's Basketball Championship. That was the chair of the NCAA Division I Women's Basketball Committee in reference to suspending Louisville's head coach, Walls. 
And of course, it's not just a women's women's basketball heavy show. We got to still have a lot to talk about. We're gonna be we're gonna take a quick break, but when we come back, we're gonna go heavy into men's hockey as they turn as they go to Buffalo this weekend. We'll be right back. Hey, Dad, I need your help asking Jessica to prom. Of course. Love is like the ocean. You have to tread. The oh, waters. Dad, that's not the kind of help I needed. Hey, Jessica. I. Um, will you go to prom with me? Yes. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care can't wait to share their first with you. Let me tell you about the toughest guy on earth. He has the crazy strength to lift the man that raised him up without even flinching. This guy, no, this warrior will always be by his father's side, even if his dad will hardly remember. If this guy isn't the toughest guy on the planet, then I don't know who is. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfie. Ah! Selfie, nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on man, let's put a ride home. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Welcome back to uh, Colonial Sports Center. Now, we're going to get into a, do a quick recap of the Robert Morris men's hockey team from last season as they are in Buffalo this season. Um, and I'm before really we have to apologize for any yeah. technical difficulties, we're going to send it over yeah. to David Szymanski to uh, quickly recap what happened. Actually, we're going to go straight into Robert Morris with Bentley. The Robert Morris, the Robert Morris uh, took on the Bentley Falcons. Apologize for the technical difficulties. They were down 1-0 to start the game, or start the second period, after a goal by Jack of Novak. But Luke Lynch will tie it up, and now we're going to go straight into the third period. 2-1 now, down by a goal again. And this one's going to be Aiden Spalacy, and he's going to tie things up 2-2 two to two in the third period. Kept going back and forth, back and forth, to use the generic sports term. Back and forth, back and forth. 2-2 two, two now, as we're going to go later into the third period. Great save by uh, Francis Marat. He had a phenomenal postseason. And he's going to see another great save by Marat. And that was a big reason why the Colonials were able to pull out of this one. Now we're going to go into overtime. 2-2 two -two in overtime. Freshman Justin Adamo. It's the biggest freshman class for men's hockey. And they, took, and they really came away in this one. 11 freshmen. Justin Adamo, the freshman, getting the game-winning goal. 3-2, to two, Colonials pull away. I think everyone was ready and knew we could do it. Uh, all the lines were rolling. Everyone was really uh, sticking to the process and believing. So I think uh, having four lines rolling with our D getting really solid, uh, good defensive zone, we were pretty good uh, in overtime. So yeah, it was a good and now we're going to send it over to David Szymanski, who's sitting by with a couple of RMU Century Media men's hockey beat writers, John Hanna and Jack O'Brien. David? I'm joined by John Hanna and Jack O'Brien. And guys, thanks for joining me. The men's hockey team has had a pretty successful season. They're headed to their sixth straight um, playoffs for the conference uh, championship, uh, which is quite the feat in and of itself. So what are, what are your guys' thoughts on the season uh, as it's unfolded? Well, something to keep in mind with the season is that towards the beginning, you had a lot of uh, you had a lot of um, expectation mm -hmm. for this Colonial squad, um, being last season that they made it to the conference final, and the year before that, and the year before that, this would be if they could win in the semifinals. This would be the fourth consecutive time the Colonials made it to the conference championship. So you had a lot of high expectations, and you saw in the you know close to the middle of the season, right around after the Three Rivers Classic, you saw them kind of 
falter a little bit, not really win as many games as you thought they would have. But the way they've been playing now is, is exactly what they would have needed mm -hmm. to finish the season strong. Yeah, and it's almost reminiscent of uh, the 2014 season where they made it to the NCAA and actually won the championship. No, yeah, and a lot of, a lot of uh, things that line up here with the 2014 team and this year's team is that you look at the shot percentage, uh, you have a nine, you have a point zero nine eight shooting percentage for the 2014 team, a point oh nine two shooting percentage for the 2019 team. The overall records are about the same: 2014, nine, uh, 19, 18, and five. This year, 16, 21, and two. One of the things to keep in mind here, though, is they're giving up and they're scoring around the same amount. You have the goals per game in 2014 being about three and a half goals. This year, about two and a half. They're giving up around three goals a game, same as the 2014 <laughs> yeah. squad. You're seeing a lot of comparisons, a lot of um, a lot of uh, connection between yeah. the two teams. And, and, and so I, I hear you on those connections. And then also, so their opponent is going to be American International College, who they played earlier this season. So let's not only compare Robert Morris to themselves, but let's compare them to their previous uh, opponent, who they played earlier this year. In the first game, they lost 3-4, to four, and then they won the second 3-1. to one. So they split the series. What do we expect in that game? What do you expect to, to happen? I mean, there are obviously neutral sites up in Buffalo, so you won't have that fan impact, which is big for both teams. Right. But uh, I just think it's playoff hockey. Everything's tougher. And Colonials have a great amount of momentum. Uh, there's actually a quote here I have from uh, defenseman Aiden Gerdukis. It seems like we finally hit our stride. It's uh, definitely at the right time now in terms of the playoff. So I think that they can really surprise some people. No, exactly. And another thing with the way they've been playing now, you had a feeling that if RMU was going to do well in the conference tournament, it was going to have to be some gutsy wins, some gutsy efforts. You're seeing some really nitty-gritty games coming down, uh, some really fighting for every inch you can get. They've been down in games this conference tournament, and yet they found the drive to push ahead and overcome their earlier, uh, their earlier mistakes mm -hmm. in the game, which is something that you didn't see in the regular season. So they're really pushing that boundary now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and you know, going on that, it's got to be so much of the experience. With, with it being six straight trips uh, to the playoffs, um, there's so many returning players that can can preach to the experience mm -hmm. that you were talking about being on a neutral site maybe not having as many fans as you would expect in the stands what do you think that experience will translate to on the ice as they go into into these playoffs well I think that the guy the older guys on the team you're looking at guys like Alex Tonge, Luke Lynch guys who have been in this position before and they've won so you've got great guys in the locker room looking at the young guys you've got 10 freshman skaters on this right. RMU roster which is I mean you, Logan showed earlier they can make an impact the Damo scoring the game and series winner so exactly and so I think that those older players are in there they're saying hey don't think this is larger than life We've been here before. We know what it takes. We can get you guys ready. And especially, a big factor in that is head coach Derek Schooley, the experience he's had. And the one thing Schooley likes to talk about a lot is consistency. Mm -hmm. And what you're seeing a lot of right now with these games is consistency. Hard um, getting pucks to the net, really getting after their chances and making the most of those chances, like you saw in overtime against Bentley. Yeah, and that was a very great win that they that they recently had. I think that they're on a two-game winning streak as they head into the playoffs, so they've got yeah. some momentum headed their way. So looking beyond just playing American International College, if they do win that game, who are some of the other people in the conference that you guys would, would look out for in the playoffs? Well, one, the two remaining teams that RMU could face would be either be Niagara or RIT. Two teams that RMU played very hard in the regular yes. season, very evenly matched teams. The Atlantic Hockey is a very evenly matched conference. It's a lot of good competitive college hockey, which is great for the conference. But the style of hockey you're seeing in these later rounds of the playoffs is exactly the style of hockey that you saw teams like RIT and Niagara exhibit in the regular season, really just getting in deep, more grinding for your goals rather than basing it off of skill plays. So I think that it's going to come down. A lot of these teams are evenly matched. I'm not seeing a, I'm not seeing a blowout or right. anything like mm -hmm. that. It's going to be close, maybe some overtime games here and there. So for the fans at home explaining the, the format of this, it is a one-game elimination? Yes. Yep, yes. one game. And so it's everything just on the ice. Winner, take all, loser, goes home into the off season. That's got to be a lot of pressure. What players do you expect to step up the most? Uh, I honestly think uh, 
he mentioned them, but the seniors, Luke, or older players, Luke Lynch, Alex right. Conge, uh, Luke Lynch's brother, Zach, was actually on that uh, 2014 team, so I think Zach has given Luke some pointers as to how to really play in these sort of high-energy situations. And then, obviously, in that, Francis Marat, got to rely on him. He's your last line of defense. Yeah, and another one as far as defense goes, Eric Israel is going to be huge for the Colonials, a facilitator on the blue line, a steady defenseman, a guy who is, has a, a just as much offensive skill as defensive skill, great two-way player. Um, he's, been tr he's been huge for the Colonial success. You saw that he was uh, injured early in the season, and you saw an immediate change when he got back into the lineup. So Eric Israel, another a big player for the Colonials in the playoffs. Absolutely, and so... As we go forward, can I get a prediction from you guys on the score of this game and then whether or not they'll advance beyond and ultimately win the AHA championship? I will say, like I said earlier, they're going to be close games. Um, I'm thinking a one or two goal game. If it is a two goal game, it's going to be an empty net. Mm -hmm. It's going to come down the line. I'm thinking 3-2 or 4-3. But RMU's got a little bit of history on their side, being the only eight seed to go past the quarterfinals in Atlantic Hockey Tournament history okay. since they started the Atlantic Hockey Tournament in 2004. So you've got history on your side. You've got momentum. I think RMU is going to come out, win by two, flat out. I'm going to say 4-2 RMU beats, um, <laughs> excuse me, AIC. My, 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 no. my apologies. Um, and and w w what would your prediction be? Uh, I'm with Jack. It's going to be a uh, close game, close checking, close everything. But I'm going to say RMU edges out a 3-2 win. They don't get that empty netter like you alluded to. <laughs> Yeah, and if I were to give out my prediction, I think that RMU will win. I think that they're going to win in a high-scoring game. I think the guys are going to come out. Lots of shots on that. 5-1. I might not know hockey as well as you guys do, so I could be way off base on that. And then I do think that they're going to end up winning the AHA, despite not being the highest seed uh, no, yeah. in, in the conference. It would be history. No, exactly. And again, RMU, when you look at them, how they line up against teams like Niagara and RIT, it's definitely an even, ba it's an even keel matchup. You definitely see uh, some comparisons between the two in styles of play, how they score. It's going to come down to head coach Derek Schooley's favorite word, in my opinion, consistency. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be, a, it, they're going to have to stay, they're going to have to keep playing the way they are, keep playing hard, keep playing fast, and making the most out of your opportunities. Well, guys, thanks for joining me. Uh, I am going to be joined by two women's lacrosse players when we get back after this break. Hey, Dad, I need your help asking Jessica to prom. Of course. Love is like the ocean. You have to tread the Oh, Dad, that's not the kind of help I needed. Hey, Jessica. I, um... Will you go to prom with me? Yes. <laughs> you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care can't wait to share their first with you. Let me tell you about the toughest guy on earth. He has the crazy strength to lift the man to raise him up without even flinching. This guy, no, this warrior, will always be by his father's side, even if his dad will hardly remember. If this guy isn't the toughest guy on the planet, then I don't know who is. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just going to drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text-to-emoji ratio? Oh, man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on, man, let's put it right home. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Welcome back to Colonial Sports Center. I'm joined by Mackenzie and Melanie. 
uh, Gandy, uh, and you guys are on the women's lacrosse team. You guys are twins. You yeah. guys uh, are juniors, but it is your first season playing together. So talk about that and, and why that's the case. Well, I was out freshman year due to injury, and she was out last year, like really early. And um, I think we haven't played together since high school, so I think it's really important that we step up this year. And I think we've done that so far. We just have a lot of a lot to make up for. Yeah. Coming back in full swing. Yeah. Hopefully full season, fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. And and so in, in talking about that, the last time you guys played together was in high school. So as you guys were, were coming from high school, mm -hmm. was your hope to always go to the same college? How did that transpire? Um, I mean, I guess we never really sat down and discussed it. I just think since we were playing all throughout, like when we were in club, we just like always worked well together on the field. So I think coaches probably just saw us playing well together so there was like why not just take them both yeah we never really thought about it like she said but it was just like inevitable like we're we're actually roommates now yeah. we do everything together so yeah, you, so so roommates the same major mm -hmm. um and the same position is that position playing it uh you know being so close is there a competitive nature between you guys and does that make you guys better as players it always makes us competitive, so, I mean, we just know each other so well since we're always together. Like, we know our strengths and weaknesses, so I think it really helps us, like, push each other past, like, our limits to make us better and do, like, extra reps of things and just to make sure we can get that playing time that we hope we deserve. Playing sports our whole lives, we played soccer and lacrosse, like, our whole lives together. We've really built, like, chemistry and trust. So I know, like, if I pass her the ball inside, like, she's we're going to make a good play out of it. So in, in knowing each other's games so well, do you guys ever have moments on the field where it may not be the same with your other teammates, where you just know where each other's going to be? Yeah, they, like, our teammates joke around. They're like, oh, it's twin telepathy. But, like, it kind of, like, works that way. I kind of know where she's going to be or how she's going to do things. Like, I know her strengths and weaknesses for playing with her for so long. So I just kind of know what she's going to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we trust all our teammates, obviously, but there's always just, like, that, I guess, underlying feeling that, like, oh, I, as soon as I pass Mel the ball, like, I know she can, like, either do this or this, and she's going to make a good play out of it, so. You guys have had a ton of success early on in the season, not only individually on the field, but also as a team. So as we look forward to you guys moving into NEC play, what team do you think is going to be the most competitive with you guys this season? And, and how do you like your chances to win the conference championship this year? Um, it's definitely going to be Bryant or Wagner. Those are always the two most competitive teams, and we really want to get after it and beat them because once we make it to the NECs, we always get caught in the semifinal game, so we want to show them what we got and bring home that ring this year. We started in preseason, like we've built a culture that we've expanded on, like a more positive environment, and through that we've really pushed each other, and I think that's like the key to getting us to the next step this year. Well, that's great. Thanks for taking the time, Mackenzie and Melanie, mm -hmm. to, to sit down with me tonight and to yes. talk about lacrosse. Mm -hmm. And now uh, we're going to toss it Back over to Logan Carney at the desk. Thank you, David. Now, earlier today, it was we're going to go straight into the Colonials game against Cornell, I guess. Just going to jump right right into the things. But certainly, the game clear is going to be down 9 nothing. Josh Williams is going to attempt a 3, but it misses. Luckily, though, Charles Baines right there, and he's going to put the Colonials on the board. Colonials now down. Malik Petaway, he's going to power his way to the hoop. And that's going to put the Colonials in to try and trim that big red lead. Of course, Josh Williams layup. And there was also a big three at the end of that half by John Williams from the volleyball line, in fact. For, uh, apologies for not showing that. But as we go into the second half here, we're going to see a couple quick plays. Malik Petaway, he's going to miss, but McConnell will hit. And now let's just go right into overtime. Manny McConnell is going to hit. Is going to hit. A three once the ball finds them. There's the ball that's going to find them, and there's the three that's going to go right into it. That's going to make it 87 82. And one last shot by John Williams, and Army is going to pull away 98 89. Non conference competition left the men's lacrosse team at a record of 1 in 5 this season. Last season, they had just five losses all year, and what was a historical season for the team. However, heading into conference play, the men were hopeful to turn the tides of their season. The first opponent in Northeast Conference play was Sacred Heart. In the matchup last year, the Colonials won 12 goals to 8. 
What would the team have in store? David, why don't you take it away? Absolutely. So the Colonials, as they take on Sacred Heart in what was the first conference game, as you alluded to, of the year, it's, it's an incredible start to the game. RMU actually gets up early. You see Sacred Heart, first two goals, but RMU comes out firing. And they're going to end up going up 6-4 to four in the game. And Colonials, they've got to be feeling good about conference play, where they're at. But Sacred Heart is going to go on a run here where they score, right at this point, six straight goals to take a ginormous lead over the Colonials. And the Colonials are going to end up only losing this game by two goals, but that's due to three goals in garbage time towards the end of the game. But the Colonials didn't, it wasn't, it's a lack of opportunities. They had three handed uh, opportunities on the field. David, we're going to throw it to a quick commercial break, but whenever we come back, we're going to have our games to watch for this weekend. Of course, there's a lot to watch this weekend with playoffs like we alluded to earlier. Yes, we're going to preview is. the upcoming games. So we will be right back. Hey, Dad, I need your help asking Jessica to prom. Of course. Love is like the ocean. You have to tread the Oh, waters. Dad, that's not the kind of help I needed. Hey, Jessica. I, um... Will you go to prom with me? Yes. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care can't wait to share their first with you. Let me tell you about the toughest guy on earth. He has the crazy strength to lift the man to raise him up without even flinching. This guy, no, this warrior will always be by his father's side, even if his dad will hardly remember. If this guy isn't the toughest guy on the planet, then I don't know who is. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just going to drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh, man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on, man, let's put a ride home. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do you still just visit their friends? Look! Welcome back to the Central Sports Center. Now, we talked about it a lot. This is a very, very busy week for a lot of Robert Morris teams, especially three of them in the postseason. So why don't we just dive right into our games to watch? Yes, my game to watch is most certainly the women's basketball team as they take on Louisville. It is the big dance. Um, it's a 16 versus one, and I know how the story is supposed to go. You know, we're the team that's counted out that no one gives a chance to. Uh, but actually, we're going to talk about mine first. Sorry to interrupt you there. Have to tread the oh, Dad, that's not the kind of help I need. As I apologize for some uh, technical hey, difficulties with the audio. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna show we're gonna jump right in you know, yeah. to my game of watch for the men's yeah. basketball team taking on Presbyterian College. Yes, and you know this game's gonna be in the North Alabama Complex, which is uh, it could be their last game to play there. I think they, if they win if they get another home game. But who are your players to watch, Logan? Josh Williams and Adam Flagler for uh, Presbyterian College and Josh Williams for the basketball team. Josh Williams averaging 14.6 points per game. That's first on the team. Adam Flagler 15.7, a little bit higher than Josh Williams. Both of them pretty decent. Well, pretty good three point. I I think that's going to be a big what it comes down to um, those two players. If they have, a, if either one of them has a good night, then that team could end up winning. Yes, and and you know how we just talked about it, it could be their last game at the North Athletic Complex. Breaking news just the other day: Robert Morris next year is going to be opening up at UPMC Event Center, playing against Pitt. The other day, that was earlier today. Earlier, earlier today. today, breaking news! Incredible that we get in city rival to come to our place for us to open well, up in, in our city rivals uh, that can kind of a they never want to play us, but, <laughs> but finally they will so i'm calling it a rival oh, so i didn't know you were suiting up for the team that. next year well i have a year of eligibility 
But <laughs> you're right. I'm not. <laughs> Why don't we take a look <laughs> at the upcoming games for this week? I'll preview all of them real quick. Actually, mm -hmm. it might not, but uh, apologies again for the technical difficulties. But, uh, of course, you know, there's there's a lot going on this weekend. The men's hockey team, like we said, is going to Buffalo. Both lacrosse teams will be playing at home tomorrow. Or, sorry, not tomorrow, but Saturday. So a lot of games going on this weekend, especially on campus. And yes. And, and all of those games are, are obviously going to be exciting to watch. And, and what are your picks for the week? My picks, I, I honestly don't know because there's, there's a lot of playoff games. Very, very exciting. I mean, Louisville is a big one. I, I think Louisville will end up winning. But, of course, I mean, men's basketball team with Presbyterian yeah. a lot. And that's going to be all the time. We, at least we can get more into my picks, but that's going to be all the time that we have on this one. Thank you all for joining us on this show. We will see you next week.